Apparently this is live. Um, hi. Responding to being tagged a while ago by um, Hammond Shitsteak. Woo. Um, try to take advantage of that to try and actually do some videos on this channel. So, um, not sure how quickly I'm going to go through this because it's kind of late here. But, um, yeah, uh, starting with role-playing stuff. Right. In order of first first, because that just makes more sense to me. First game that I had lots and lots and lots of fun with. Everwear Visionary Role Playing. It's a diceless system. Um, I'll just open the box. That comes with a lot of pre done characters. Me. Random big sheet, simple numbers. The game's core system revolved around the four elements and it used them for like stats and stuff. And for resolution of action, you had a sort of pseudo tarot deck. Oop, that way around. Uh, which had some gorgeous artwork. Still getting used to the cameras. But yeah, there was um, a book that came with it that basically helped you um, get your head around what the cards meant and stuff. But apart from the um, like pre-done sort of bench that came with it, Everway also had a series of, um, again, really nice artwork uh, cards that were meant to... Oh God, Bit closer, that were meant to like inspire you to come up with your own stories. Which uh, I might actually try and do a video on Everway a bit more in the future at some time because I think it's quite underrated. It's much more storytelling, um, you know, on the fly sort of thing than a lot of the games that you encounter, like uh, D and D and stuff, where you've always got. A lot of the system there that drives things to a degree, you know, um, not a really heavily combat orientated game. You could do it that way, but you can do anything with anything if you put your mind to it. Um, but yes, so game number one, Everway. Go and look it up if you can find it. Um, game two. When I go through all the books that I have not organised properly because I'm silly is Vampire the Masquerade. I played that quite a lot in my youth and really enjoyed it. It's, it's the game that really got me into roleplay alongside Everwear. Um, but yeah, it's like the first game we ever had of it properly that was run. Uh, we even had a werewolf in it using the vampire rules and for some reason a lot of people would be like, oh god, you did what to that one? And no, um, it made perfect sense. It was a very fun short game that unfortunately never got continued uh, because we could never get that group of people together again after the first one, but very, very bizarre. Uh, the game that I used to run um, a lot when I was younger, yay, more White Wolf product. Uh, well, the Apocalypse. I really, really, really enjoyed the side of this game of the spirit world and how it, you know, the werewolves are there sort of like trying to be a balancing force to a degree and looking after Gaia and things. But um, my games never had too much to do with the actual meta plot of it that are still involved Pentex because I love the evil master corporation thing. But, yeah, it was interesting. There were only, like, two players through most of the game, and then another player joins, had, like, three people, you know, two school friends and one who um, I knew through one of the others at the time, who I still know, yay, and still roleplay with quite frequently. Um, then we have... You may notice a theme here, but... Woohoo! World of Darkness, the new lot. Um, 
uh, I, I'm only holding um, these two books at the moment, Innocence and World of Darkness. When I say number four, like World of Darkness, I'm kind of cheating and mean all of it. Uh, I'm not too keen on Mage because I really struggle trying to read that book. I don't own that one personally. But whenever I try and read through a friend's copy of it, I don't know what it is. Apparently a lot of people have this issue, but I struggle with that book. Um, and if I was, to be honest, if I was to do anything to do with mystical stuff, there's like Second Sight. Um, I've recently found out the Hunter books have a lot of like magic stuff in, which um, I quite like because it, it's simple enough to just throw it in there if required for um, other stuff. And I am trying to get a World of Darkness game together, but in the role-playing game like group I'm a part of, we have a lot of GMs, pretty much everybody in our group, which is like around 10 people typically, can GM, has GM'd, and will GM again. So uh, trying to get games in there, it's like, it's like saying, I'm going to run this now sort of thing. And... Um, yeah, at the moment we're playing a Requiem in Rome game, which is awesome, but I, sorry, but I've missed the past few games due to illness and stuff. Um, but thankfully my character is um, busy writing, so they've got a reason to be um, out of the way. And uh, lastly, the fantasy game that I enjoy, Pathfinder. Woo! But yeah, um... My friend showing me this is the thing that got me into fantasy gaming properly recently. The uh, only thing that I found really weird was when they said, yeah, it's basically just D&D, &D. and the last time I had anything to do with D&D &D was in Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, um, specifically the first quest box set. And, uh, yeah, I always got confused by Thaco and some of the other stuff in the um, books. It never sunk in. I didn't have many people back then to talk to, to um, help me figure things out, so I ended up pushing that to one side. And, yeah, especially when you have a lot of people, when you're going into, like, all the gaming shops back back when I was, like, younger and stuff, who'd be like, oh, I could, like, 50 orcs with my thingy character. It's like, it was always about who had highest level and who'd killed the most whatever, and that threw me off. Hence why I'm one of those vampire players, because that was more about getting into the character and all of that a lot. Which is really frustrating, because in our group, when we do play Pathfinder, a lot of us do get more into like the character side of things and the reasoning behind why that person is doing what they're doing. So, yeah, rambling. I ramble a lot. You know this. Um... Oh, and anyone, feel free to leave in the comments something telling me the music is really, really annoying or something, and if it is, I will not bother using it again. But for the sake of trying to record something, I need some noise, because I've tried recording videos when it's quiet, and I've really struggled, um, except in like the VT My Vampire YouTube thing. Um, I've not been on there that much, but whenever I have been, because of some to react to, I'm able to... Woo, talk and stuff more. Um, rambly, rambly, rambly. Favourite compilation albums? I can't do my favourite five albums properly because I like way too much music and I feel like I'm... Con it's like I tried doing lists and I kept feeling like I was ignoring something every time I did them. So I sort of semi-cheated here as well. Um, again, let's do this. This isn't in order of favourites exactly, it's more just um, in one that makes sense. Um, for all of these, I'm going to like put a link to like about two tracks from each compilation in the um, down below thingy-majig. But we have Select Magazine Revolutions 03, which, um, like, hmm from a magazine called Select uh, in year 2000, which had a uh, Blink-182, uh, Costa, Deltron 3030, go look that up, PJ Harvey. It had what at the time was a rare B-side of Mobis called Memory Gospel and, and uh, other things. I'll put like a track list in the thing of what's on all of these. But, uh, we have that. We have my first, like, proper, like, heavy metal CD thing. Let's try and get that out of the glare. 
Metal Hammer presents XFM Radio 104.9, which was cool because it introduced me a lot of bands that I'd not heard of at the time. Uh, Pitch Shifter, Slipknot Machine Head, uh, Coal Chamber, which a lot of people hate and stuff. More importantly, Squid. That's like a random British band that, you know, kind of like big on the underground side of things for a while. Uh, it's also got one of my favourite Catatonia songs on. Not the Welsh band, the other one. With the really happy and uplifting title of I Am Nothing. But, yeah, really like this CD, and I'll definitely put in a link to Squid, because I really liked that band. They're reuniting to do, like, a last gig thing, but I unfortunately can't afford to go to. But, um, hopefully... Well, I've been in contact with, like, one of the people from the band, and hopefully they're going to, like, record it for, like, posterity, which would be awesome. And breathe. Yeah, hopefully the more times I try and do these videos, I'll stop being so rushed with my talking. Uh, then in this really damaged case, I've got two of my favourite ever compilation CDs. These would be like the joint number one, if I'd actually like got them in number one sort of thing. But yeah, Terrorizer magazine, like proper extreme metal and sometimes all the random stuff in there. Like, uh, I think they're on this one, number nine. Yep, yeah, number nine, second gem. Yeah, there's a lot of cool bands on here. The Haunted, um, as a second gen. Uh, Kevin, Jack Frost, Dominion Caligula. Uh, the other one's much more like on the like death metal side of things with Decapitated, brilliant band. Um, Galshkag, sorry if I'm pronouncing some of this crapler. Uh, Nothing Promise, Old Forest, uh, Medulla Nocte, Stamping Ground, and a really cool, like uplifting punky track by a band called Hybrid Children. Uh, every day, live every day like it's your last kind of thing. But, um, yeah. And then finally, for the sake of randomness, we have this. Let's see if I can get This was a mixtape. Uh, for those of you who are all silly and young and don't know what the hell that is, it's like a cassette. Wow. But, um, oh, wrong way around. Let's see how well the track listing shows. But yeah, this was made for me by a friend a long time ago now. And, yeah, it's a mix of songs from various compilations that they had and cassette tapes and all sorts of stuff. Um, and we were sat around for quite a while trying to get all the like, volume right for each of the tracks so that it was kind of similar. But yeah, ni nice mix of gothic stuff, heavy metal, and 80s tracks. Like Annie Lennox, Love Song for a Vampire, um, The Cure. Opera Nine, another really awesome underrated band. Um, yeah, Cradle of Filth, Nine Inch Nails, Soulfly, Misfits. A local band that um, I need to try and find out what tracks my friends got of theirs to want to try and upload them. A local band called Dawn Razor. Who, um, yeah. A friend's brother was the drummer in, and I've started occasionally chatting to the guy who was one of the guitarists, who's got another project at the moment called Dawn of Elysium. I shall put links to Dawn of Elysium in there. If you're into, like, 80s inspired gothic rock, you might like them, so that'd be cool. Yay, and moving on to artists. This is where it could all go horribly wrong. I'm going to try and do a screen share so I can show you the pictures. So, let's see. Camera's going to go all weird and funky. We have to start with... Uh, H.R. Geiger. I have been a huge, huge fan of his work since um, very young, um, when I started watching like the Alien movies. 
and the whole biomechanical, like, um, lots of spiritual symbolism in there with some of the work, and very, very sexualized. I always found it really, really interesting. But yeah, especially the um, alien design. Because, uh, just fantastic art we're going. There's like some of the like, really early concept stuff with the strange bug eyes and stuff. And, yeah, it's like I love all the, the figures in the background there, are all really warped and mutated. And this apparently is the original design for the chest burster. It just looks like a possessed chicken. Could be interesting to use in a role playing game, I guess. But um, not perhaps this one that just looks like it's flailing around in pain. Although it could really creep people out. I mean, if you walk into like a. In a fantasy game, you walk into somebody's kitchen, there's one of those flailing around on table that might put you off your food, or your character off its food. And uh, this is one depicting more the uh, spiritual type of stuff and satanic imagery. But yeah, anyway, so that's H.R. Geiger quickly flick through. I really hope I'm not this like e and panicky in any other videos I do. It doesn't help that I'm recording it via Google Hangouts, but um, let's see. Francis Bacon. Shift this Again, another artist I adore. Lots of warped like movement and odd meat-like textures in a lot of the work. And I love his... I don't know what it is. I've seen... Um, was it three figures at the base of a crucifixion? Or study for three figures at the base of a crucifixion in person? And I love his red. He's got this fantastic way of doing like, this orangey red. But yeah, the, the, you can't capture it on camera properly, which is right pain because it's gorgeous. I, yeah, as you can tell, I really like his red. Um, you know, n not weird in the slightest. Uh, again, this is this has to be my favourite image of his. I'm just going to try and get that a bit more full screen. But yeah, um, got a newspaper clip clipping of that one that I had framed. But um, yeah, the the colour on this when you see it in person is stunning. But again, like I said, I love his warped perspective and muti you know, mutilation, mutated, whatever you want to call it, sort of way of showing the human physique. Yeah, that's a different... He did... Th this piece he did about several different versions of, which it's interesting to see somebody do the same concept of a piece of work and just altering it through time. But yeah, just I love the rawness of the work. Uh, that I believe is a self-portrait of his. Uh, let's try and zoom in this. This is another version of the one that... Okay, it's a really badly pixelated one, but it's another version of the painting that was on earlier. One of the Pope. Another one of the three crucifixions ones, which is a lot more different than the, other, the previous two. And that'd be the end of that lot. Where are we at? Uh, John Blanche. Um, I am a huge fan of Warhammer 40,000, particularly the older versions of the game. I, I came into it in the second edition. And the artwork from that period of time has always just really grabbed me and been interesting. 
because of its more, you know, grim, gritty, 2000 AD sort of interpretation of things. Yeah. Um, like I said, I just really enjoyed his artwork. It's like apparently in a lot of his paintings when he was doing them, he'd literally sort of just throw water at them while they were still drying, which is what created a lot of the textural work that um, his pieces are renowned for. Again, another thing that I probably like about him, there's just something about how he uses like these burnt umbers and yellows and reds, again, um, that I just really, really enjoy. Oh, my voice. Random Inquisitor. I think, yeah, uh, there's the cover for the second edition game. Maybe it's rather peculiarly posed orc there, and... Yeah, someday I am going to do a conversion of that guy. You can now buy a resin of him, but... I remember an article that showed you how to just make that model and I don't mind having a go myself. Excellent, beautiful cityscape. Well, beautiful it's under attack by chaos, but you know, to each their own idea of beauty. The um, Sisters of Battle codex cover. I mean, the main thing I always love with his work is the skulls everywhere and all the, like, tiny little bits of detail are strewn around all over the place. And all the little, I don't know, minions, followers, uh, priests and everything else that always seem to follow Space Marines and Sisters of Battle to, to the uh, front lines to document things and preach at the enemy. And then this, this is my favourite image from 2nd edition Warhammer 40,000, it sums up everything about the Imperium to me. Mostly just the slogan, and they shall know no fear um, for the Space Marines. But yeah, it's some sort of captain in Terminator armor. But yeah, there was one which was done in a more, um, what is it called, sepia tone that I really like, but I can't find it in that for some reason. Just the black and white of it, but um, yep, yeah, that would be John Blanche, who is also apparently a really nice guy, because I've got a friend who hates the artwork of the guy, but met him at one of the um, Games Day things or something, and thought he was a brilliant chap. Uh, let's see, Escher, bit of MC Escher. Um, although this isn't a brilliant example of it, the main reason I like this guy is I love his ability to work with perspective and twist it a little. Uh, like this, with the almost like um, perpetual motion type thing. Probably more pronounced in some of the other images I've captured like this. Um, he a lot of his work apparently was inspiration for the scene in the Labyrinth movie, with um, uh, David Bowie being the Goblin King. But yeah, it's this twisted use of perspective that I've always loved and thought this is what like wizards or necromancers like towers should be like when players get into them. That's the one. This is this used to be at my middle school, and I loved it when I first saw it because just trying to figure out the way you've got this waterfall that's feeding itself. Now I would love to try and run a roleplay setting where the laws of physics and gravity and everything is messed up like this. Let's see, yeah. And we also had this one in my first, not first school, middle school again. And lastly, Banksy. 
This is a British graffiti artist who, again, it's probably just the rough, I love work that's rough, and I also like a lot of graffiti stuff. He isn't the best graffiti artist out there, but somehow his work's got a certain message to it. Um, can be very political at times. The thing is, no matter how politically charged his work is, somehow due to, I don't know, kitsch, some, some sort of reason, it's, it's almost like it's allowed because of um, him being an artist or, you know, whatever. But this, this book cover says it all. You are an acceptable level of threat, and if you were not, you would know about it. I think that kind of sums up his work to a lot of people because he'll do his little social commentaries like this one and they're just seen as innocent artwork zoom in on that one a bit that's going to be pixel it to hell yeah Screen share off. Ah, there we go. Um, yeah, so that's a random, brief, quick, and a slightly paranoid anxiety run through some random artists that I like. And books, what have we got? Yeah, um. Again, I'm kind of cheating here because, as far as I'm concerned, these two are one book. Well, you know, one tale. So, yeah, J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, that would be the whole reason I really, really enjoy fantasy stuff. I had the Hobbit read to me when I was really, really young, and I've read through Lord of the Rings six or so times you know, incomplete when I was younger, uh, but unfortunately due to my memory being screwed, I can't remember it all very well, and at some point in time I want to reread them, because although I've got the movies available for, you know, whenever, um, there's just, you know, there's a different feel to reading a book and getting the story out of it properly. When you're reading, you kind of feel more a part of it, whereas when you're just watching it, it's like a passive act sort of thing. Oh, I'm fiddling with my hair. Um, after that, we have another of my favourite books from my youth, um, which somebody else has mentioned. Stephen King's It. The book is fantastic. The move is quite cool, but... Yeah, there's a lot of themes in the book that um, are quite sexual, that, funnily enough, especially back when that movie was produced, really would have... It, we wouldn't have it wouldn't have been brought out to the public if they'd have done it. Um, but, yeah, very, very, very cool book. Um, and I love the whole... where it goes through the different time periods of them being children and them being adults dealing with the um, threat of the... Creature, clown, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, the other one that I forgot to get is The Yattering and Jack by Clive Barker. Um, may, I mainly say from the graphic novel because that's the first uh, book of his I ever owned and read, and I love the portrayal in that book of demons. If you want to have an interesting look at what demons, devils, whatever are like, Ian's getting all tangled in my hair. Um, go read The Yattering and Jack. It is awesome. I love the characters in that book, whether it be the demons or the um, main protagonist, Jack himself, who's a very cunning, interesting character. Um, yeah, if you're ever going to do a game with demons or anything in it, please go read The Yattering and Jack. It is awesome, especially... The, 
get the graphic novel if you love visual stuff because the artwork in there, whoever it's by, because I can't remember, is gorgeous. It is really, really ace artwork. Um, again, I'd like to do two books here, but I've left the other one out um, because to me they kind of got the same sort of feel to them. Uh, Jack Kerouac on the road, the um, big beatnik thing. I loved reading this book. It, um, along with the other book that I was wanting to tie in with this, which is um, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Repair, that I can't remember the author, the, um, author name at the moment. Um, they're both fantastic books about going on a journey, um, sort of perhaps discovering yourself at the same time as reading these people discovering themselves and the world around them. But, um, yeah, the Beat Generation interests me a lot. The poets like William Burroughs and well, Jack Kerouac himself. But, yeah, lots of... Um, I don't know. Back in the day when, uh, you know, there were people mixing from different races and things were still frowned upon. They were going out and hanging around all the like jazz clubs and things, not caring, just having a good time, and dealing with all the crazy stuff that life throws at you at the same time. Um, not, and lastly, on the book front, Voyage of the QB66, which although is a child's book, is not one I actually read as a child. Um, I was working at the Oxfam charity shop in my town, and it just caught my eye one day while I was um, sorting through the books, so I put it to one side and bought it. Although it is just a nice, like, children's book, um, all the protagonists are animals that are, you know, gained consciousness of some degree, and it's mostly written from the perspective of the dog called Pal. Um, but mostly seems to be about um, a monkey called Stanley, who doesn't know he's a monkey to start with. But, yeah, it's kind of his journey of discovering what he is and where he comes from. Um, the thing that makes this book really weird and interesting when you start reading through it is the fact that it is almost a post-apocalypse setting. It's literally... The humans have vanished. It's, it is set in England, but there are no humans. Humans have all mysteriously vanished. It's, it doesn't really bring up a reason as to why they're not there, but there are no humans, the, the animals have sentience, and, you know, they do what they do to survive. And if you like, like, um, Animals of Farthing Wood, you might find this interesting. So, um, it's by Penelope Lively. I'll just try and get that all fitting in there nicely. Right. Voyage of the QB66. There's the animals. And illustrated by Harold Jones. But yeah, so if you're bored wanting to read something interesting and not your typical read, go try and find that book. Uh, lastly, um, just like before with the links from the compilation CDs, uh, I'm just going to do a quick list of my favourite music videos at the moment. Um, uh, again, there's no favourite, there's no like top number one or anything because I'm very hard to do that. I find it very difficult. We have um, By of Monsters and Men, the video Little Talks. I really, really want to do a role playing game inspired by that music video. Um, again, like I'm definitely putting all the links of these in here because you have to see them. Everybody has to see these music videos. Um, Apex Twin, Come to Daddy. Uh, the first time I saw that, I was um, living with my like mum and dad, and I had my headphones on because it was like two or three in the morning, and I'd just gone downstairs to watch music TV because I couldn't during the daytime because everyone else was watching television. And, yeah, it, it was almost like a religious experience, sat in the dark, pitch dark, about that far away from the TV screen watching that music video. Um, 
very bizarre British artist. I love Aphex Twins' work, all of it, whether it be the really hardcore snares and drum rushes or the very melodic work. But um, yeah, uh, Aphex Twin come to daddy. Um, the video for Tourniquet by Marilyn Manson, I really love that song, but I love the video. All of these music videos in a way time to sort of my visualization for a lot of role playing games, you know, the um like feel of the setting and stuff. Not exactly the music, more literally just the videos themselves. Um we have Tool, the video for Schism. Um Paradise Lost, which is another local band that are fucking awesome. You must all go and listen to Paradise Lost. Um, like the, the main track of theirs that is brilliant whenever they play it live is As I Die. So yeah, they're another like metal band. You you never guess. I love metal, but um, yeah, metal and goth stuff. Um, the video is Forever Failure, which includes a sample um, of Charles Manson talking. But yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful video, and I love the string arrangements on the track. Yeah, I love the composition of all of their tracks. The um, main composer of their work, Gregor McIntosh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, yeah. Um, as I said before, I'm going to put links to stuff in the bottom. Um, if the random music that I've had looped in the background is really frustrating and irritating or something, I'll come up with something else. It's a random track I came up with because I needed to have something audible in the background to talk over. You know, maybe I'll get better at this in time, but anyway, uh, let's end this broadcast and post it up and try not to be all eek. People are going to hate this. Um, Take care of yourselves and goodbye.